right? I just had it. I, we could talk so, about for after hours, but I have a genuine, genuine question for you guys about the poops too. You can save it if you want, or we can talk about it now. Something that I've curious. thought about. You've really intrigued me. Well, it's a genuine question that I'd love you guys' input on. Yeah. Okay. Let's, I don't really let's start it. This is pre-show. Let's. <laughs> is it going to be on? Yeah, it might might make it okay, on. Because I want the audience to lean on it too. Yeah. I want to know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So tummy's well, rumbling. Alien theorizing. Okay. So tummy's rumbling. Little yeah. upset, little sicky, mm. sicky boy, you know, you didn't you don't feel very good. But you think you can make it home, right? Because most times you can, you make it home. You pull your body up, knows exactly how long it takes to hold. Well, here's the thing. Like, so you get home, you get your keys out. And all of a sudden you go from being like, oh, I can hold this. And then you're like, keys in the door, turn the fucking, like, unlock, mm. beeline to the bathroom. Bowels are exiting your ass before you touch the person. As, right? as you're like on the way down. Yeah. yeah, on the way down, right? Now, here's my question. Now, what like is it is that just your what how long you can hold it for generally? Or is it the fact that your body knows the routine? It's like I'm home now, I get to shit. So it like it eases a bit, right? Like do you 100%. think you're just getting to your capacity hey, of it holding must be the nice. shit? That must be nice, because I've had it where you just yeah, you should no, be I, doing your Kegels so you get a tighter asshole or whatever. I think your body, your body, your body can t- has a perfect timing when it comes to shitting your pants. And if it knows you're about two minutes from home, it can hold for two minutes. And then when you're about ten seconds from the toilet, it goes, "I'm letting go now." Yeah, it's up to well, you. you know what it is? That's... No, I and I, I agree with that point. But what I think it is is your brain. I think oversimplifies like, oh. Your home door Poop. in toilet, and then it's like unlock the door. I didn't account for that. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, but maybe it's like shoes. It, what do you mean shoes? <laughs> it's like a muscle memory thing. Oh, shoes are yeah. on. Shoes are still on. Right? Like, yeah, I don't take my shoes off. Never. You can't. If you take your shoes off, you're shitting in your doorstep. Right. Like, and but that's why I think like muscle memory, like things relax as you get home, and it's just like oh, it, fuck. your body knows and knows when to go. Or could it be the transition from sitting to standing? Because I feel like when I'm sitting, we're Probably good. Walking, I'm driving, a I'm like, walking, it's okay. A, bit, a right? little walking, the, yeah. yeah. A little walking too, right? little walking, all of a sudden it's like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. but, um, we can have all the theories in the world, but if, there's always comes a time, though, when you're not, you're not going to make it. You're going to have to shit on, the, oh, yeah. shit on the fucking Sky Train, shit on the side and, of the trail. And uh, start the world's yeah, poop on somebody's la- roof. latest pandemic. Exactly. Uh, That's what he did. And, yeah, just for listeners there, 50% of the podcast right now is battling – Something. Oops. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Slides going on. Uh, I, I li- literally projectiled, like like I was, haven't projectiled like that in forever. It was wild. I so didn't you even really. You're starting kickstarting COVID twenty three. It was You're honestly. Oh great. This the spray was f- coming out my mouth forty fiving. Some of it, like most of it, didn't even get to so toilet. Extra like, style, yeah. like yeah. I was, yeah, I was like, oh my god! I was like yeah, everywhere. I was like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And I was like, and then I was like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm done because I haven't eaten that much food. And you take a sip of water and then I throw up a liter of liquid. I'm like, how does that work? I was like, dry heaving, though. That's the move. Gallon some dry fluid heat. so you have something to come up. That's that's my illness always ends with dry heaving and that's it. Nothing ever comes up ever. Like, yeah. So like oh, that's all ever. sound and fury signifying nothing. Nothing. And it's just the worst feeling. And yeah, like you know, weird. like you want your body wants to get rid of it, and my body says, "Fuck you." Uh, have There's you ever? Yeah, hold have on. Because you well, you're emaciated, it needs all the fucking calories. Dude, you I've can gone get. four <laughs> fingers deep in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> you fi- you finger blasted that uvula? Oh, uh, right down happens? deep. <laughs> oh. I can't bring myself to do that. I can't. Uh, dude, I could I could make myself throw up right Tom now. Tom Jerry just style, going, just like, grab it in the back yeah. and just like yank on it. <laughs> I'm the type of person where when I like I know. I know for a fucking fact puke is going to make me feel better, but I'll resist it. And I'll resist it as long as I can. Sometimes I go, you know what? Maybe a puke will make me feel better. Is, and so you I just dart to... your hands down your mouth to make yourself better? I don't, I don't have to. I can, I can, I can vomit on, on call. Who is that? Is it, was it Draws? Who, was it, who did that? Draws? The fucking wrestler, Draws? I made know. himself what barf all the time. Puke. Huh. Yeah. What? Is that um, kidding? Well, you swallow... <laughs> You like kind of swallow a little bit of air and then you're just like I ruin your esophagus. Like, <laughs> I don't use that power all the time. Just, you know, when it, it's you know, it's funny. I, draws. Yeah, that's right. I put all new handles on my, in, on the, in the house today. And I was going so fast. I must've forgot the screws in one in Nova's room. And Steph just sends me a picture. And the handle <laughs> fell right up. Nice. 
Nice. <laughs> so Nova it's half the handles inside and Nova's in the room. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. It's a locked That's in. An, Perfect. First yeah. podcast break. Maybe That's some real craftsmanship right there. <laughs> um, tonight's episode is obviously case file 286. Yeah, 286. 285. Ape. 285, the Battle of Ape Canyon. Um, taking this to Washington State, where I just was. And maybe that's where I picked up this god awful sickness from. Probably. From down there. Some, some, some Sasquatch sickness. Yeah, Ape in the hills. I caught it. Um, Did you spend any time in the, near Mount St. Helens? Um, I don't really know where it is, so yes. Probably. <laughs> well, that's that whole mountain chain, right? Cascadia Mountains is part of those, mm-hmm. all yeah. those peaks. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Kind of by... <laughs> yeah, I think I was there. Yeah, you're close enough. I was in the pass. You're in the proximity. Uh, yeah. Uh yeah, this case file takes us back to the summer of 1924, where a group of prospectors, uh, you know, right in the height of the go- the gold rush, were uh prospecting near Mount St. Helens. <laughs> prospecting. <laughs> Um, which had which had a um, a large, a pretty sizable amount of prospectors during that time during the, the gold rush, and there was a lot of uh, you know pop up little towns and people going up into the mountains in these isolated areas that had probably been untouched by man for millennia. You could probably say, and then these prospectors were fortunate or unfortunate enough to stumble across what may have been a tribe of sasquatches, and yeah. they just happened to really piss them off <laughs> i think it's i think the plural is uh sasquatch 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 or sasquatch 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 all right i don't think you need the eaches just the sasquatch sasquatch um plural if, if for those of you who probably who live in the you know the international att uh, crew, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with Mount St. Helens, yes, it is part of the Cascade. Who's not? Range. It fucking exploded. I... It's like one of the most violent fucking volcano explosions that you can watch online. Yes, I, if you, if there was a goddamn movie. Well, there's Wasn't not. There I mean, there's not a lot of volcanoes that we have like video of, like, <laughs> and, and like kind that. of not like in, that aren't on island chains or something like that. You know, oh, it's like we don't have any. You others. know what I just thought of too, because this was such an you know, like. Uh, like I can't remember the exact term. Seventy people died, I think. In that blast. Was it that, that many? Hell? Like absolutely eviscerated From the bike. side of the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Uh and like the shockwave just rippled down the tree, destroyed the forest. If there was a tribe, that tribe gone. of Bigfoot of Sasquatch gone, so. are gone. And I never even thought about the displacement of the Sasquatch. This is Pacific Northwest. This is Sasquatch country what that kind of blast would have done to disrupt the Sasquatch population. And if we're thinking that if they're territorial or something, you're pushing them into other Bigfoot, like, you know, maybe this was a, a so in other words, if you live in the outer areas, lock your garbage up at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's what happens. I thought, I thought you guys would be um, experts in this area since Mount St. Helens was discovered by George. George of Vancouver, which oh, is yeah, found all of, Vancouver. <laughs> which yeah. I found out all of the Pacific Northwest is basically Vancouver named Islands. after George Vancouver. Yeah. Vancouver, yeah. Washington. There's two Mount, Mount Vancouver. Saint, there's two Mount Vancouvers. Apparently, there's one there on the U.S. Uh, the U.S. and Canada border. Dan, between I'm about the to Yukon. blow your mind. I'm a, and there's Dan, another I'm one in New Zealand. <laughs> we we are all from the Okanagan Valley, which is O K A N A G A N. You go down south, and there's the Okanogan, which is O K A N O G A N, the Okanogan valley. valley. It's just there's it's literally like twin valleys, and they have the same fucking names. And then they just change the spell. So there's a Squamish down there. Our Squamish is spelled S Q U A M I S H. Like bizarre. Okanogan. And there is S K S K Y M I S H Squamish, and you're like, what squeamish. the? You're like squeamish. And so they're like bizarro the versions of you, like brain yes, cell and exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's kind of weird though. Like I get what I get where old George is coming from. Just like I discovered this gun my name. Yeah. Right? Not you just your name over No, it's everything. all Vancouver. I named it. Vancouver. <laughs> He's like, this peak over there, that one Vancouver. I see over there, Vancouver. They're Vancouver. like, you just named that one Vancouver. He's like, it's another Vancouver. Did it's you find Vancouver. it? I found it. Dude, I'm surprised the whole region's not called Vancouver. The whole thing. 
As far as BC is concerned, it is all called Vancouver. This is true. It's Vancouver, and there's nothing else, unfortunately. That's true. Big Vancouver and the greater Vancouver area, just as all of BC. (laughs) Yeah. Um, If I ever discover a chain of mountains, you'll know it because it'll be all my name. The cheeks. The cheeks. (laughs) The seven cheeks. Um, well, the Cascade Mountains, of which the Mount St. Helens is a part of, uh, we're known to have a number of mineral deposits, including gold. And when news got over into the East Coast and spread out through North America that these mineral deposits were, you know, easily exploited, uh, you had a number of, ex- you know, intrepid prospectors and those with their get rich quick schemes and everything were heading over minor 49er style and getting their. <laughs> stinky peats um we're getting over there to start exploring you know the region this is how a lot of the region got explored and you know cataloged and um you know mapped because of this like m- most of it um so you had a number of these uh prospectors venturing up into these rugged and remote areas of saint helens which again had not seen uh probably none of them had seen people and much less white people um well, the uh, whole mountain and, range is crazy because it's actually compared to most of north america even the rocky mountains is an insanely high like alpine range like some like a lot of the peaks are over ten thousand feet oh so like, and, we, we always talk about how bigfoot if they would they would live in parts that humans never venture and in this location at that altitude like that's yeah we never went there this is like the first these guys are the the Arctic explorer is pretty much of the region. And if, if you think about it, I mean, a lot of, a lot of volcanic areas um, are some of the most like, like well forested, you know, resource wise, like well growing forests and things like that. Since volcanic soil is, you know, rich and fertile, right? richest and yeah. fertile um, that, you know, you can have these big forests and these places are very diverse and robust wildlife. Um, and with all of these miners and uh, prospectors moving into the time, I, I mean, you saw a lot of intensive mining activity, which, you know, had, of course, as a, as a consequence, you had the uh, environmental impact on some of these areas. So you were having forests that were cleared for mining operations, you know, streams and rivers were getting diverted. And then, you know, all of this kind of disrupting all the natural, uh, you know, the natural order that was there on the mountain and which, you know, to Sasquatch territory. They were fracking, weren't they? Sasquatch. So a specific group, of of miners uh fred beck uh gabe lefever john peterson marion smith and his son roy smith uh had set up a camp uh on in in that valley uh to search for gold now um beck and his team apparently they they built a small cabin in what was <laughs> what is now known as ape canyon uh it, which is it's, I, it's it's named from this event right it's wow. named the ape eponymous canyon. event that we're gonna that we're discussing yeah. uh and uh but you know at that time it was just this remote area on the southeastern it's actually slope just called of, canyon back then yeah just yeah. Canyon. Yeah. canyon battle <laughs> canyon generic name yeah <laughs> Um, and so this cabin kind of served as their operational center. It was kind of going to be like they're, they're kind of, you know, fall back from where they were going to spend like the next two years prospecting in that area for gold and other minerals uh, while they were there. Um, now, I mean, if you think about it, like this, this shit's crazy and people still do this to this day because, I mean, there's fucking tons of like discovery channel special shows of like, people like prospectors going out into these areas and stuff you know um and you basically have to rely on yourself for supplies provisions and everything and you also have to be naked if i remember correctly right Those shows? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have your bird out and you get to pick one tool and you start mm-hmm. somewhere in the bush yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's how that works <laughs> man if you're goes. naked on meds you'd freeze to fucking death <laughs> you'd be so dead. um but yeah Any time like, of year anytime of year yeah um but yeah, you'd go up there into these things and, and your group, your crew would have to be uh, entirely self-sufficient because there's no going back. Like you're going to be like two days out, you know, or at least like a day and a half, two days out from like the closest maybe town, like and, and walking, like you're not gonna be able to walk there in like a day, like, yeah. you know, if you're lucky um, and make good time. But yeah, it's just like going out there with like nothing uh, you know, hoping that none of you get injured because if man, if you get if you break your leg up there, you're fucking dead. <laughs> well, yeah, fucking done. There's no air evac. 
there's yeah. no fucking gps sat phone it's like sorry buddy like w- you either can carry them out or not that's it um so the the group themselves uh spent almost two years like i mentioned before on this mountain searching for gold and now so they're like they're they're what familiar life. with the, yeah they're familiar yeah, yeah, with so the this must mountain. be this must be somebody's like claim i'd imagine right like, I, I don't even had... know if they had claims back then. No, I think you no, could no, just no. walk I... around and be like, I claim this now. I'm here. I don't I don't think it. they were they weren't doing like mining. Like they didn't have like mines. They weren't digging they out mines. Panning. Like they were mostly yeah, they were just panning, I think, mostly like uh, that kind of stuff. Like they're going down to the, you know, to the rivers and springs and just kind of panning for which gold would, would kind of come out of those um out of those water sources like there's there's no there's no mention of bringing like heavy duty mining equipment or anything yeah it was just it seemed like they were just i i always kind of thought they were just looking for areas rich in that for possible mining later on i mean this is this is the time where it's like people thought you could just basically go to these you know you find a stream and then you just reach in there and haul out a big chunk like a handful of gold big old nugget nugget you're set for life (laughs) um but but during this time, this two years of which they were up there and, um, you know, becoming familiar with the area, they had a couple of discoveries that were kind of strange that they they marked uh, during their time. Um, at first, like there was like they, they kind of had these a couple of discoveries of these strange footprints uh, around various parts of the valley where they had been prospecting. Um, one of the first was actually found on like a sandy banks of one of the streams that they had been frequenting. And they were they were unsettled uh, probably to say the least um by the fact that this set of footprints seemed to kind of like come out of you know near the the shores of the stream and then kind of just disappear as the trail moved away from the water well, so and they were unsettled because they're like hey that doesn't look huge. like a that doesn't look like a bear well, and that like looks like said, a big like, person. <laughs> like these people have to be completely self sufficient too, right? Like I'd imagine everything they're getting, they have to hunt or gather. They're trapping, hunting, yeah. Right. So they're ex- they're all experienced hunters at this. I would imagine, right? Or at least mm-hmm. a few of them would be to right. feed the crew. So these I, I, I would say no animal footprints. Yeah, I would say all of them for sure. At, at two years out there, you would know animal pr- footprints. They're, they you probably have, have snare lines all set up, and yeah, yeah. They, they got, they I, got I would assume you'd be on going. the lookout for bear footprints. You'd be very familiar because oh, like you don't want that fucking sneaking up on you. A grizzly, you'd be yeah. you'd be all over that shit. In the twenties, bears were a problem too. Yeah, like massively a fucking like they're obviously still a problem, but like the populations and shit like that. Like there is a good chance that you are going to run into a fucking bear and die. And not just a bill, a bear, like a grizzly, like a thousand That's what I mean. pound grizzly. Like there's bear. grizzly bears everywhere. And of course, well, you know, we're just, reintroducing them. We're both, we're both like, five <laughs> years away from it being a problem again. So just, yeah. and, you're about to, and we're about to be eaten again. We just, we <laughs> just talked about it on the last, on the last power hour. And then what happened? That's why I knew that. That's and then someone got eaten. Someone, someone got attacked got by a grizzly. That's right. I said that in the group. No, Zelstradamus. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody got fucking mauled by a grizzly I know. Bear. I'm pretty. I, I said someone's gonna get eaten. I'm pretty sure Braden said it's probably gonna win those damn tree planters. I think oh, I said that. Is that yeah. yeah, that's, and that's funny. exactly. Well, dude, they go out there wearing headphones, fucking just head down, just planting all day. Yeah, you get right? paid per per tree, so you get ten cents a tree or whatever. You just got rip. You're in the middle wow. of nowhere, and you just walk into a bear. Like, and I easy. like I'm pretty confident. Like the bear, like I, I know I've heard like black bears at least are pretty quiet like they can they can sneak up on you like they can just like well, especially when you up. got your fucking beats on and you're listening yeah, to you. <laughs> terrible yes. fuck but just just in normal under normal circumstances or something terrible yeah. under normal cir- circumstances like bears can just sneak up because they just like walk around and they're not like oh, dude, you know, especially if, if they're not crashing through the forest they'll just be like you you could turn around you're like there's a fucking bear you're like oh shit turn around especially if there's a stream in. Yeah. Like if there's a stream close by that's like masking oh, yeah. a lot of noise and then somebody could just fucking walk up from behind. You wouldn't even know it's coming. Yeah. Yep. They just bump, 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 and they so come behind you. Just, just One bear. swat, you're paralyzed. And then yeah. you just watch yourself be eaten alive. Oh, yeah. God. Jesus. Jesus. Leonardo DiCaprio style. See you later. <laughs> the Revenant. Oh, that's a good fucking movie. Uh, it's a great movie. <laughs> Um, so, but not only did they recall the events of the, um, of, of the footprints and things, cause there was like one or two times that they were finding these footprints and like these, these don't look like bears. These look like large human footprints, like abnormally large, like not just like just a big, you know, these aren't just like, Shaquille O'Neal feet. These are like giant, really big feet, giant, um, footprints. giant footprints. Um, but, but they also said that they also heard like multiple occurrences of strange, like percussive sounds 
like while they would be out in the woods, like they would hear stuff like that sounded almost like rhythmic and sometimes and then it would stop mm. and then would like start up again. And how do the sass squeech communicate? Uh, it is knocking. it is allegedly yeah, yeah allegedly they do use tree knocking um it not just lot, tree yeah. knocking there's i've actually heard on sasquatch chronicles it's been um theorized that they actually use different trees and different striking objects to change the pitch to change the meaning that's so fucking creepy <laughs> so right. you so you hit you hit like a dead tree with a solid branch it produces a right. sound you hit a uh a hardwood tree with a dead branch it produces like a different sound and they say that they have different ways to communicate through the sounds of the knock i don't know how yeah. you decipher what those like how you come up with I that mean, but that's that's been theory well that's what that's i mean a lot of like the sasquatch you know the, the organizations that go out there and study and, and search for sasquatch they, you know they say that tree knocking is one of the primary methods of communication that these uh, creatures use and um, because it can be heard like from far away. I mean, there's a reason that beavers do it too, right? It's just like you can hear it so far. And if you have like a 500 what pound if, Sasquatch like wailing on a tree, like you could hear that from miles away. What I'm if sure. it's what if it's alert? Like what if it's you know? Because we thought maybe it's not so much a communication thing of like them being like, "Hey, Bill, what's going on? Where are you at?" Or but maybe it's a, like an alert thing where it's like, "Hey, there's humans in the woods." Knock, yeah, it could knock, be like knock. a marking or a warning, right? You know? And they're like, and yeah. they're just knocking until so then like, like Morse code. Yeah, so then they're not they're not fucking making noise, right? They're laying low. They're kind of creeping around because they don't want to be fucking right. They think we're predators or something, right? Uh, like when you get those little noisy them. chipmunks, right? Yeah. That when you're in the woods, it's like, mm. and you're like, yeah. shut the yeah. god shut damn the it, fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, towards the end of their their expedition uh, and the plan time that they were spending on uh, Mount St. Helen, um, they had found a little bit of success is is what's uh, reported that they had had a little bit of a uh, little bit of find to some some gold and stuff. So they came out like they were coming out relatively flush, I suppose. Um, but Beck apparently developed a severe toothache um, of which he was like, I was biting too much gold. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. <laughs> I mean, that, could, that actually a, like i could, could be true i don't know yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. two years uh, of chomping rock yeah, yeah i guess yeah i guess it could possibly that could possibly have been what caused it um and so uh it was severe enough that it's like i guess he had waited it out for a while i guess he was kind of being like you know toughing it out uh for for a certain amount of I time really die from an abscess tooth yeah, yeah. Like, that's um, legit. but i get into the barber <laughs> asap uh but but it it got to a point where um the the group decided to kind of you know uh, go back to their cabin and then wait until beck like felt well enough uh to kind of uh, go for the return trek back to to town um which My i think the closest... description of this cabin is like so this this is a tiny ass cabin right so yeah supposedly yeah. they had room cabin. like it's like a there shed was one bed like there's one bed <laughs> And then, like, the floor for the boys to sleep in. Apparently, the bed was big enough for two of the guys to share, but, like, spoon. And then the other guys got on the floor. So it made me wonder, like, so, like, are the the guys on the floor the lucky ones or the guys that get to share the bed? Is there, like, a schedule? Maybe there's, like, a schedule. There's a rotation, I I guarantee. Yeah. So I've I've actually, because I used to be friends with someone. Used to be a prospector. Yeah, I used to be a prospector. With random dudes. And uh, and who had had basically a backcountry map of trapper cabins. And you're actually allowed to stay in trapper cabins. Like you can just go and they're, right. they, they're not allowed to be locked. They're on public land. Yeah. yeah, they're on public yeah. land. I'm pretty sure and those so are the I cabins can... that are on fucking Yellow Jackets. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I st- I stayed in one, and it was a uh, cool experience. Tiny, super fucking creepy, super That's... fucking creepy, <laughs> uh, but really really tiny. And there was four of us, and uh, it was like we we there was like a big like a queen mattress. And all four of us slept on the mattress because the floor was so gnarly. We we're like, right. "Fuck it!" So there's four of us in sleeping bags, in a tiny little up. fucking mattress, cradling on a each queen. other. Mm-hmm. On a How queen. do I on quit queen. you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll just zip all of our all our uh, body sleeping heat, bags right? together. Yeah. So alternated foot, feet, foot, feet, foot, feet. Headsy footsies, yeah. Headsy footsies. 
You're still all um, your junk still lined up. Though. Headsies, footsies, or sixty nine, buddy. <laughs> we all lined up sixty nine style on the on the queen. Yeah. So um yeah, just just to remind like remind people like the setting. It's like it's they weren't staying at this cabin like every night. This this cabin was kind of like you know where they would they they come back to like they would go out. They probably camp somewhere um in a couple spots. You know, spend time. You know, a couple days uh, here and there. Uh, looking span you know panning and doing whatever prospectors do um and then they would come back to the cabin every now and then you know uh resupply and then go back out so they are they're coming back from one of their expeditions and um I, you know on the way to the cabin the group discovered another set of the treks which seemed pretty familiar because they had seen these before um uh, but they weren't really quite sure. They're like, well, you know, like at first they kind of looked at it and they were like, oh, maybe it's just a really big bear. Um, and, you know, and they got a little bit closer and, you know, took a closer look at these footprints and they seem to resemble apparently like these things were like 19 inch human footprints. Um, you got talking some shacks here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and they realized that these footprints were uh, very similar to the ones they had spotted, like in the earlier weeks where they had, you know, they had found near the stream and then in a couple other places. And and then they also said that they were reported hearing like a whistling sound while they were studying this footprint, which is another hallmark of like Sas, Sasquatch uh, communication. They said that they use like, yes, tree knocking and also like wh like whistling is uh, something that's reported to kind of go along with Sasquatch encounters, like uh, especially the ones that where they're kind of like, yeah, it's like it carries the sound carries well, you know, through the forest and you can hear well, it. Like, you, you know. Either way you think of a Sasquatch, like if it's uh, like a hominid, like a distant relative of us or some type of ape, we all make that kind, we can all make crazy like sounds with our like, mouth. Yeah. Time. Like in the whole know, can, ape can apes whistle? Like I don't really whistle, but they make like crazy like whistling lights. Yeah, sounds. vocalizations like vocalization yeah. sounds. Yeah. We we have a pretty we have a pretty uh, so it would just range. make sense that like a Bigfoot would have some type of vocal communication. But it's mm. like how how advanced? Like. Yeah, it would make it like they had like a some type of you know whether it's a, a language or a communication method like just based on tree knocks and and you know high pitch high pitch sounds that carry well in the forest. Um, but they said that they heard this whistling while they were looking at the the footprint. So they're like, oh, we kind of we kind of probably need to get a move on. And I think I think they did record like that they had the strange feeling that they were being watched. Uh, that something something wasn't quite right. And because, I mean, if you're sitting there and you hear like, I mean, you've, you've lived up on the mountain, uh, you know, for, for almost two years now, um, you're probably with bears. Yeah. I've had run in with bears probably. Um, but there's that thing. And I know like hunters talk about it and, and things like that, but it's like, it's anywhere, right. Where, the, where you're really familiar with the surroundings and like your, your brain just kind of catalogs what the normal sound sounds like. Cause I can, I can say it for like working in a, in a steam, in a steam room in a power plant. Right. Just and, like, your car. A, you're driving your like, car. Yeah. You know, like, when you get room. a weird fucking noise and you're yeah, like, you know, something doesn't sound right. You're like, that's you know, some, something's off. Yeah. You know, and you're like, something changes and you're just like, that's, that's not right. Like I'm, I've never heard that sound before. Right. So I, every time I drive with no music on, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's what a vehicle sounds like. Something's wrong. <laughs> um, but I imagine it's something like that. Like it's, un, it's a very unsettling feeling where like you're out in the woods and you hear a noise that you don't normally hear. And you're saying like, Oh, that's, that's not a normal animal sound. Um, you know, we might want to want to get moving. Uh, now when the, when the miners got back to the cabin, uh, there is well there there's kind of there's differing reports about what exactly happens on the 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 journey back to the cabin um one is that the men like the men had stumbled across like they were going out to um at least one of them let's see Fred and Gabe uh of two of the men went out to like a nearby spring to collect some fresh water and along the way together <laughs> bathed together yes just before you know go i mean you don't want to be they stinky when you get bed. back to town they like, shared the know, bed yeah oh well, yeah you got it yeah you don't get you're the bed dirty. yeah you don't want to yeah. get in the bed dirty so yeah they got to go you know get a shower and you can't, off it's you hard to wash your own back 100 <laughs> um so reports say that they encountered somewhere between one and four 
Could you imagine? <laughs> this whole story was concocted because they spent a little bit too much time at the fucking lake washing where, up with each where other. Where were you two? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> the fuck took you guys so long? Well, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> um, Fred, so, Gabe, how long have you been up there? What, 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 what are you out there for? An hour? Two you, hours? <laughs> why are you guys walking funny? <laughs> um, you look Ethan. clean. <laughs> Uh, this is where, yeah, this is where they describe uh, scene one to four, Harry bipedal ape men, and they describe them as ape men later, like and when they um, when they yeah. eventually would get back to town and then uh, relay their story and and retell their story of what, the experience of what had happened. Uh, you know, they they describe them as these like large hairy ape men that were taller than your normal man with this long shaggy hair all over their body, and they did not look human like they these these were not these were not people um yeah humans like these things oddly were... enough this is the one of the first times i've heard i've heard this type of like hominy described but with like long ears hmm. uh, yeah, that's true that I've is never true heard that before uh i'm trying to think of my in my of all the ones we've heard if they're like that kind of stood out to me because I don't remember yeah. ever hearing like like before. like like more like a canine ear like how big are we talking here? But maybe yeah. it's a maybe like it's a regional. Like, do you remember dog soldiers? Yeah, maybe it's a regional <laughs> adaptation, right? Like maybe there's maybe right there's different Bigfoot and like I said, we don't well, there see these ones. They say four anymore, species, right? Like well, yeah, we use like skunk apes. You're yeah, just like poking out a little bit more than your right? average Sasquatch, maybe like yeah. Just the, and the long, quite the long eared right Sasquatch, like this. the elf Sasquatch. Uh, um uh now upon seeing this like you know you know once they once they got their wits back in place you know beck apparently just whipped out his firearm and i think so anyways i started blasting pretty much well, gabe, <laughs> gabe like started fucking running like just fucking bailing falling <laughs> over himself guy. uh trying to get his stuff and get out of there and then Beck's uh, just like well <laughs> just yeah stood his Beck's like well uh beck beck apparently uh opened fire and he took three shots um after one of the creatures had roared in their direction and seemed to be taking like an aggressive posture like there was one in front of this column of like eight men and just like kind of started to you know step forward and made this really resounding loud uh roar uh and so beck you know shot. just figured that's yeah. yeah that's good enough for me i, I would shot. say like in this Bye-bye. situation any posture to me is aggressive <laughs> yeah no shit <laughs> Man, I'm like, <laughs> that's aggressive getting shot um so with that um apparently that these these creatures were then scared off into the the forest like once he took those shots they're not really sure if he hit the creature but um at, at least one of them kind of took off and he, he took aim at that one specific creature and was uh what he said it was like he hit like he hit the bark like he could see the bark like flying off the trees as he shot at him and then the, it was just like disappeared into the woods well and and the the first three shots that what's happening here uh-oh uh-oh oh, dan no. dan can you hear us dano oh. benjamin uh-oh meltdown dan. maybe we should take a break at this point in time yeah. oh no he's dead Break? Dan died. Well, yeah, while we try and revive Dan, we're going to take a short beer break while we get this figured out. We're going to be yeah. right back.
We're back. Uh, so after after Fred and Gabe like scare off, or you know the, these these eight men retreated into the woods after uh, you know taking yeah, taking a couple shots. Cover, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, they get back to the cabin. Both men make it back to the cabin. And they kind of tell them like what they saw, what, what's going on, and, and they're not really, you know, all, it, which puts everybody on edge because you're like, "Fuck!" Like we just saw like uh, King Kong and his like and his family <laughs> hanging yeah. out down there, and it's like we scared them off into the woods. But you know, it's also like it's very Tuscan Raider shit. It's oh. like, well, they, oh, they'll be back soon and in greater numbers. Well, like I, know, I forgot. <laughs> I for, what I was going to say before we you had the computer meltdown is that. Beck, when he took the three shots, the first two did nothing. He did nothing. And the third one kind of dropped it for a second. Staggered it. Staggered it. Staggered it. If he right. hit those first two shots. Now, like, I don't yeah. even know if he would hit he became those first vulnerable. two shots. He became vulnerable for 50% more damage for about two seconds. Right. Now, did, yeah. did Beck stick around for a little staggered bit? Staggered damage. Pull? Did, did he pull a little, like, a Alfonso Harris? It's like, hey, Kiko, you got nothing on me! Or did they just <laughs> fucking book it? No, he didn't. Uh, I feel like he got to be pretty, like, I'll just fucking drop on these motherfuckers. You um, some? Then you, but you got, like, this is the 20s, you got your little musket-fed fucking shitty rifle. Uh, so, but that wasn't the last time that they would see these creatures. Now, as as the night kind of wore on, again, like they're waiting to to go. Um, that was the original plan well, was they were going to wait until day until daylight well, until to go uh, back to town. Um, well, but, one of the accounts that I read is that like not they could, these guys are booking it back to the cabin, and as they're booking it back, they're hearing like they're hearing fucking sounds, like they're either being pursued or there's more stuff coming out of the woodworks, right. Yeah um but like as you know some of the reports are like when they made it to the cabin like kind of things started to kind of settle down like they're just like okay maybe we just saw something really weird and this is probably the worst part because it's like but that's you probably know, a false sense of security though because you're like oh we're indoors but that's we're like the worst it. part right you're just like you're front yeah. you start like you start relaxing you're like you know what? maybe i don't maybe i didn't see something really crazy maybe it was just a couple of bears or something you know you're just like settling down um and everything kind of seems to be normal then sometime around midnight after midnight um <laughs> after midnight we're gonna, Bigfoot gonna come man. and get you <laughs> um we're gonna, gonna let get it all hang you out now yeah. sasquatch is gonna let it all hang out because apparently they describe something large ramming hard into the cabin like not, not like penis, hard enough not to a, not his penis no not the penis <laughs> as um, far as we know wow. Maybe we don't know. Yes. We don't know. Uh, we don't know because nobody's it proportional sure. to well, the like size said, of the body. We're gonna let it all hang out. Fucking yeah, Bigfoot's let it all true. hang out. Yeah, <laughs> Bigfoot's got a baseball bat swinging. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, at least it's dangerous. Um, uh, so something rams into the cabin and like hard enough to like knock the knock dust from the rafters and like planks loose and and waking everybody up from sleep. Like I'm sh I'm sure nobody was like in a deep sleep because I know I fucking would be able to sleep if that shit was happening. Um, but it just like knocked a bunch of plank planks loose and these guys are all up and like wondering what's going on. So be so disoriented, right? Like you'd be, what the fuck? <laughs> so. uh uh it's reported that marion uh one of the men uh actually got up and then kind of took a you know took a look through a gap uh through some of the logs in the cabin so like this cabin is like it's not like a <laughs> like we said it's not like it's not like a super nice super it's like they just like stack logs on top of each yeah, other it, and it's, it's like, very like you guys did this in the fully woods with axes it. they weren't doing it with chainsaws yeah, like, and shit like yeah even if they like if it was like the, what was that stuff the chinking or whatever like the mud and everything in between oh, so there would be like no. yeah it was like you just stacked a couple <laughs> logs this is lincoln log stuff and yeah. just like blip, 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 and just stacked them up on top of each other and that's where they are but you can't um, say you can't say chinking <laughs> is that what it's called did i fuck it up uh, i don't think is that the technical that term anymore? there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a couple people on the internet that are gonna get real mad at you well, well i wouldn't be the fucking first <laughs> Or or like the third time, <laughs> it won't be the last. It probably won't. Uh, so uh, as Marion kind of peers through the, this gap in the logs, he says that he would recall seeing at least three of these cra creatures, like the silhouettes of the, like in the um, in the night of these creatures, like moving around the cabin. Uh, and Dude, moving that's so terrifying the in the moonlight, like in the moon and the stars. You're just like. Oh, it those are figures. And those are the <laughs> three that, the moonlight, but 
Yeah, and these are the three that they reported like they he could see clearly, but he had a feeling there's that which is they said is like he had a feeling that there were other ones out there. There was definitely more. Like there's there's ones that he couldn't see uh directly in front of him, but those three he saw for sure. Now, um they were saying uh, as as the this event starts stuff starts going down. So they had these like rocks like are start kind of hitting the sides of the cabin some oh, stories wow. some rocks. stories say they're like some stories say they're like boulders um but other accounts say that's like it's just kind of like just large rocks like not not probably nothing bigger than like you could palm with your hand like a softball that, size yeah like i don't think it's i think it's something more like that if it were boulders like that if i dude if you threw that cabin like the way sands was constructed if you threw anything bigger it's a <laughs> solid, it's a solid log cabin though, is it not? but you should be like like it's, i feel like the thing would just fall over but <laughs> well if it's well, solid if it is solid log like it's like depends like, on how well the chinking's done it's true if it's chinked, <laughs> if it's chinked well it's not gonna fall i don't th- i don't think it is quality if you can other. see them through the cracks then yeah no, it's yeah, not. yeah 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 <laughs> so like this thing kind of seems like it's a, in a little bit of disrepair like it's falling apart um uh, so the the assault kind of begins with the with these like varying sizes rocks being thrown and pelted uh at the cabin uh and, and it kind of escalates to the point where one of the creatures is said to have actually managed to get on top of the roof because they could hear oh like something up on the roof stepping around up there uh you know rhythmic footsteps of something on top of the roof moving around from uh you know from side to side uh and, and so at, at this point the men they don't really know what to do so they grab all of the guns as you do uh um, and start just firing uh, through the various gaps that they have uh, in, in the walls of the in, in the roof of the cabin. They just start shooting. It's just... well, didn't they at one point one of them smashed through like they had a window braced up and they smash one smashed through the window bracing like the window wood slat and like they f- took a couple shots at it and it ran off. And they like they're like arm they're fucking yeah. 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 Like that's what <laughs> that's one of the most and, terrifying parts of this account is they like they yeah. said like this large hairy arm just thrust itself like through a gap like <sighs> and just like was reaching around inside the cabin to kind of grab something. Oh, one of the accounts that I read said that like it, it managed to grab like an axe that was hanging on the wall and then like rip oh, it out, fuck. like rip the thing out of the God. out of the cabin. Um, just as they were just hacking like, away at these poor bastards. Yeah, and well, they're then, just like. Yeah, it's, it's together, it's together like, strong. <laughs> fucking axe and people. It's, and then no! They, they, like, <laughs> <laughs> they, sh- they shoot at it. They're wh- whacking. I don't know what they did, but it, it retreats. And they fucking like quickly like, like it's like some Call of Duty zombies. They're fucking uh, yeah. <laughs> nailing the boards back on. Fucking, oh, hurry. Oh, my God. Yeah, like uh. terrifying. And then like after that one running away, that's when like the account I read, it's like they're like, okay, I think shit. I think we scared it. And then all of a sudden it's like boom, boom, boom on the roof. And they're like, <laughs> Jesus, we're in trouble now. Um now so this this entire thing like goes on like throughout the night and then about i think they said around daybreak and around dawn like it kind of the 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 sounds and the the rock throwing and everything kind of like settles down to a point where the men feel comfortable enough to kind of be like or or they make the decision to be like we got to go like these things have either like we got bored or tired or whatever but we need to go now um so they packed up all the stuff that they they could you know uh, everything that they needed to go because they're like we're probably not fucking i mean they're like we're not fucking coming back <laughs> like we're not going grab everything that you could carry and we're getting the fuck out of here out. Um, fuck and they ass. start to make their way to the closest town which i think was named kelso at the town uh at the time there's like a town called kelso uh yeah, that they were like dumb to. people uh well, it was apparently a pretty shady kind of town i mean it's any minor town like it's just like you know fucking well, it's, it's like a saloon in kelso it's a stupid it's like a know. saloon in like with like seven brothels and whatever like that's it like it's any mighty town or whatever um but as they're as they're exiting the valley like towards the towards that one of the like they're coming out of there and like on one of the the sides of the the like on a cliff edge like overlooking like one of the like the cliffs that uh near their near their cabin they saw one of the creatures like standing there you know just you know profile whatever like standing there like either watching them or just like standing there on the cliff and beck was just like yeah fuck and then uh apparently reported firing at the creature 
and hitting it or you know at least hitting it once or all three times because that worked so well the first time <laughs> um well it were apparently it worked this time because this creature they report they report like it stumbled backwards off the cliff and then fell like it fell off the cliff and they could tell like that thing was gone um and then you know with that with that the men were like let's hoof it because they're yeah, like if that if you kill that thing like you don't know if more are coming and well and you know and like let's just think for a second here like the the roof the roof of their fucking cabin was basically torn apart by rocks and boulders like smash <laughs> everything in there beck w- one of the accounts i read beck like got knocked out at one point for like numerous like a, a few hours yeah they thought like, he died yeah like he got struck in the head and he was fucking laying dead you've your, your your cabin the roof is in tatters everything's destroyed you've been just getting an onslaught of these long range bigfoots just hurling fucking boulders and shit destroy the cabin it's like i i can't believe they left they didn't leave earlier like i mean i guess they just wait today because then it's like you can see them well they're away, i think they were waiting chance. for a lull they're waiting for like a lull in the the assault the big, like this, yeah, this yeah, thing okay. because yeah, it's yeah, like that makes sense they waited until i think i think they waited until like the the this, the activity stopped and it was just long enough that they were sure that it wasn't going to start up again right away and they were like we need we need to go well, i mean it's make a break make go. a break we gotta go we gotta go, we gotta go now Can, faster we let's go faster to catch must go faster <laughs> boulders being tossed at us yeah go outside we might not be so lucky yeah dude you get freaking like randy johnson in the fucking dome like oh by a rock God. like a like that fucking rock. bird yeah the pigeon? Like, that would be yeah. your head <laughs> by a sasquatch hurling a fucking thing boom yeah it's like taking a fucking railgun shell. <laughs> like, yeah. um, so uh, the men actually made their way all the way uh, back to the settlement of Kelso, um, where they like very uh, depending on which report y- you you read is like as soon as they got there, uh, they they went to the like the first saloon and just started started drinking and and are totally you know. Um, you know, in shock Damn. at this point. Yeah. Um, and, and just started telling everybody about what was going on. Like they just started telling this story and, you know, everybody just starts listening to these guys, like, uh, you know, uh, retelling the story of how yeah. they, how they fought the ape men on, it- in what is now and they're like yeah i guess we're gonna call it ape canyon now I said well, <laughs> no, well it, it gets even further than that because in this bar like this is so many people have heard the story and it kind of spreads really quick that like the next day two guys convince beck to be like take us up to the cabin we want to see and Fuck these us. other two guys go up there Smart. and they see that they get they see the cabin they get there with them and the cabin's fucking destroyed all the chairs Pulver- are destroyed pulverized the roofs caved in absolutely destroyed there's fucking pebbles and shit and stones all over the place and it's absolutely dis- destroyed and then these two guys are like oh shit like this isn't this is yeah, oh shit terrible idea let's get the fuck out of here fucking we're getting Goodbye. Out. and they sh- yeah. they turn and fucking hike out before nightfall because they're too they're too worried about these things coming back uh yeah and the story the story spreads like like wildfire because this one relatively quickly like it makes it up like up and down like the west coast and they're printing stories in the local in the newspapers like within a couple of days of the men like uh, men encountering ape-like creatures uh, uh on you know the slopes of mount helen mount saint helens uh and it's like it's you can i mean you can look it up online like there there are headlines from that time of beck and his, his crew like uh, telling the story of them encountering these creatures um and you know most people kind of take it as like you know they're the, the thing is is like yeah it, what brayden described like there's two men going up to see to see the cabin those are probably the two last guys who ever saw that cabin because yeah. there there have been multiple expeditions mounted and I think there's at least one or two, like there's one or two Discovery Channel or, or Animal Planet, some uh, specials where they went to go look for that cabin, uh, specifically in the place. And it's um, some people have like chalked it up to like the difficulty of the terrain or like, you know, it wasn't exactly um, like there wasn't like there's no well, accurate. There's no it accurate map. <laughs> it got sucked into an alternative dimension because everything that's on a Discovery Channel show never gets found. That's true. Well, so as soon as they do that, it gets things, doomed, and it just I mean, is never. I mean, this area did fucking... suffer a fucking volcanic explosion, like you know, that could have <laughs> knocked over any remnants. 
on, when onto was the fourth floor. Was it 1980s? 80s? Late 80s, yeah. 80s I think. Yeah. I think it was early 80s. I think it was before uh, we were born. Early? Yeah, I think, I think 82. Was... Go. 82, 80, 82. 1980. No, it was May oh, 18, 1980? 1980, yeah. Um, 1980, yeah. The, the other thing that you said is interesting is, like, you said they went into some interdimensional rift. Well, like, all of these men have always kind of, like, stayed true to their account that they saw these eight men, except Beck. Beck, later on, he has been like, I don't think they were eight men. I think they were interdimensional beings. <laughs> yeah, Beck, Beck later in his life, like, I think I think some of the men were kind of, like, immediately after the uh, the event, like, some of them were kind of reticent to, like, you know, they're hesitant to kind of talk about the event. Like, it's reported that they didn't really want to talk about it except for that one time that once they got into town and then after that they never really talked about it again uh beck eventually would go on to kind of uh have a book published with his account in there and then where he would kind of connect make a connection between these creatures and uh you know interdimensional portals and and or the ufo i think he makes some comments on ufo phenomenon as well um but yeah like like nobody can find this cavern exactly where it was. And, you know, again, you could chalk it up to the ter- the changes in terrain from the volcanic eruptions, or you could say like, um, not exact, like the, the map where they put it is not exactly accurate. So even if, it, even if, but even like in that terrain, if you're like a mile off or a mile or two miles off, like you'd never find it. Like you no, never get fucking, especially <laughs> if there's overgrowth, like that's a lot of time for like, new new growth to spring up around yeah. it and shit. or rock like, slides it, or anything yeah. like, it's, like there's, yeah. there's so many reasons why they couldn't find it it's uh, crazy too because it's like everybody argues oh well it's been all this time we've never seen a bigfoot we've never seen it. well if we can't even find this fucking cabin that doesn't move how are you gonna yeah. find bigfoot <laughs> <laughs> um now that that event um the the bat which has become known as now like the battle of ape canyon uh in bigfoot lore it is not the only it's not the only connection that Mount St. Helens has to Bigfoot. Like there this are other area, events this, that this, yeah, this, this area, actu- this actual face. Um, I mean, w- one thing first off is I have all the missing four in one book. So I was kind of like, I was like, Oh, I wonder if there's a, if there's clusters. That's cr- That's um, incredible. Brain, brain is our, I never gave it back. Brain is our oh, UFO and missing four in one. I, I think you gave me North America <laughs> and then I just forgot that I have it until right now. Motherfucker. So I still have one of your books yeah okay well it costs like 40 dollars per book so mm-hmm. yeah um so i have a map right so i was kind of looking at the map and stuff looking at the clusters and interesting enough there is I'll, there's not a lot of dated history in these books of like 1920 it's it's all more recent stuff but one thing i like it's all like 90s and 2000s 2010s like there's not a lot of real historical missing person stuff in there but one thing I thought was interesting was that uh, Mount Rainier National Park, uh, there's a huge cluster there. And that's just north and east of uh, Mount St. Helens. So I was kind of wondering, I was kind of in my head, I was thinking, okay, if this area was eviscerated, like, in, and these things moved, if they went north into Mount Rainier, right, could there be now, is that where there's a cluster of now Sasquatch? you know mm. um if not but th- this isn't even the only account on this same face of the mountain like this exact same face of the mountain uh there was another incident in 1963 uh with a jim jim carter i think his name was is that was right that, andrew is that president yeah, andrew, yeah, that isn't is. there a president jimmy carter yeah, not yes. him. Andrew, you're the little Whatever, I could be wrong, but I had that happening in the 1950s. Mm. In the article I'm pretty I read, sure it was 63. Interesting. Yeah, in this one I said he disappeared in May of 1950. Weird. Maybe he was, wasn't he found later on? Nope, no. never found. Never found. Uh, no. But so either way, there could be some discrepancy on the date, but uh, Jim Carter, 32, was a member of a 20-member climbing party from Seattle. So as Braden said, they were already on Mount St. Hel- Helens. Um, on the way down the mountain, he left the other climbers near a landmark called Dog's Head around 8,000 feet. Uh, Carter was an experienced skier and mountaineer, and he told the rest of the climbers that he would ski around to the left and take a picture of the group as they skied down the timberline. Uh, from here, Carter took off down the mountain in a wild, death-defying dash, apparently taking chances that no skier of his caliber would take unless something was terribly wrong. 
um, or he was potentially being pursued. He apparently jumped over two large crevices and was going like the devil down the slope, seeming frightened of something. That was the last time anyone saw Carter alive. Um, so they sent out a large group, I think, there for about two weeks of experienced uh, search and rescue teams, and there was no trace of Carter. Uh, only thing they came across was a discarded film box mm. at the point where he had taken um, the picture. So he did end up taking that picture. Uh, when Carter's tracks are reached, when Carter's tracks reached the steep side of Ape Canyon, the searchers were amazed to see that Carter had been in such a hurry that he went right down the steep canyon walls, but they did not find him at the bottom of the canyon as expected. The tracks were traced by a plane again towards Eagle Creek Ranger Station before they disappeared into complete wilderness. Oh, and so apparently, like, you, you read the accounts from the search and rescue guys who were out there looking for him. And they're like, the entire time they're looking, they're like, they felt eyes on them. And it was like eerie and uncomfortable and like kind of like how the guys in the canyon. Up. Well, and, yeah. and yeah, everything, you were right, Andrew, it was 1950. I had the 1961 is uh, someone from uh, a certain search and rescue person had gone back up and led uh, some sort of expedition in 1961. So I, I oh, had okay. the dates mixed up. So you were correct. Um, but the interesting about thing about that is like one, you have I, that's a huge group of people, huge group. Yeah, man. And then one guy sits back, and he wasn't even gone that long, right? And it, they they get to the bottom. They're like, "Hey, well, he should have been here by now." So they go to the next kind of area he would be in. They're like, "Hey, well, he's not here. He should have beat us here." They they turn they turn tail and they hike back up to look for him. Right. And then they're like, they find those tracks. They initially find the first ski tracks and they're like, where was this motherfucker going? He's totally. hitting jumps. He, it's X yeah. games. He's out, of, he's out of bounds. Well, it's interesting. It's like they're being stalked by some type of like opportunistic predator. Right. So like watching this entire group of people and then one person strays and then he's like, boom. So the interesting thing about this one is the, in, one of the interesting things is that for me is I'm like, okay, well, like, we you can find videos of like bears chasing skiers right and if like a bear came across and we just like started trucking at him sure right he gets scared and he he takes off right but then it's like to to do the jumps to get down to the ravine and then to just start trekking through the like you just start trekking through the wilderness it's just a weird occurrence for how far he allegedly skis i'm like i feel like he would have outpaced the bear Bears are quick, man. I guess so. But they don't really like running downhill, right? I think that's Straight a myth down? as well. Is it a myth? <laughs> I think so. I think it's like if that's like when those – maybe they don't go straight down, but they'll still run on a slight diagonal down the hill. Yeah. Just so, every, I guess it all depends then on how, like how deep's the snow, like what type of – like is it like icy, like hard packed snow? Then the, then the bear is booking it. If it's the, deep powder, then – but in the 60s, you can't even really ride powder in those skis. Those are like little fucking, or 50s, they're little toothpicks. Yeah. Like any type of powder, you're going to sink. Well, and it's like they search for, they search and rescue teams were out there for five days uh, combing the area and didn't find anything, any remains other than the one film box. And like that to me is I'm like, okay, well, you feel like if a bear would have got him, the bear wouldn't have dragged him somewhere. The bear probably would have just left him in one spot there once you got him or there would have been signs no corpse no nothing yeah or there would have been like holy there's a lot of blood in this area now Um, i I don't know the exact part they're talking about of the mountain but like have you ever seen the did you see that recent video of the skier who falls in the crevice with the crow yeah yeah, i have yeah so they come out of nowhere they could be a they could be a 400 foot crevice and down you go disappear without a trace and then in a few hours the wind blows the the opening shut again and you wouldn't even know there was something there that's a good point you would just disappear people who do backcountry skiing and stuff are crazy well so you wear you always wear an avalanche beacon when you're in the backcountry right but every once in a while a skier will go missing and they think it's an avalanche but they can't find any trace of avalanche he's at and they can they know where he is he's in he's deep he's 500 feet below the surface of the sea fuck that so it's beeping. It's beep, 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 beep. You're over top of him. He's there, but you, you'll never get him. He just, he's gone. Fucking fell to the bottom of the of an ice mountain, a hidden ice mountain in the middle of the slope. 
it's just it's the the reports of like it being eerie and like and it being creepy kind of like makes that account kind of stand out and because it's like on the edge of ape canyon where this the initial one but like same this group, one maybe same this group one of Sasquatch. if this one if that the jim carter one was on its own it wouldn't be enough to just be like that's a 100 percent bigfoot because there is other explanations like you said where you're kind of like it could be this it could be that right it's just we're we're really taking kind of a leap on this one because it's on the edge of this area where these things fucking terrorize these guys and then you have uh, search and rescuers being like it was fucking creepy there it felt like stuff was watching us so so mount saint mount saint helens actually factors into another kind of piece of uh bigfoot lore that i'm aware of and like i haven't i haven't looked super deep into it but there's always this what there's always this kind of story that circulates around um about there being bodies recovered after the 1980s eruption of mount saint helens and there's there's kind of reports that some of these bodies that were being like people were, were reporting that they're these bodies some of these bodies that were being recovered off like the side of the mountain were not human like they were large oh, wow. um Ooh, things and like geez. these like they were like kind of the people were doing the recovery were like some type of like government entity or something like that like just these guys coming out there and recovering these bodies of these sasquatches or if they were sasquatches but people were saying like those bodies like weren't they were too big to be human or something like mm. that um so there's always like this there's always this story that kind of circulates around i haven't dug into it for for a while but it's like it always like it comes up during like it came up during this searching this but this mount saint helens area again has this kind of connect a bigfoot connection that uh, apparently like there may or may not have been some involved you know there's that also like that connection that people kind of draw to being like you know the government knows about sasquatch like they exist like they know they do and they just like they keep them secret mm, for some some reason yeah or other um it it is interesting the i see i kind of lean towards more like if they thought these things were maybe living in some sort of cave or crevice on Mount St. Helens, maybe they just got trapped in the explosion. Like whatever, right. wherever they were living and stuff, either in the explosion, they're instantly dead and their cave system has collapsed and perished. So that area is now safe for hikers. The government doesn't want us to know that Sasquatch is on the run away from the government with a bionic man living together. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. It's truth. Yeah. Seen it. Yeah. Uh, Brock that- Sampson shaved. Sasquatch. Save that Sasquatch. Escape. Never seen a say shave Sasquatch before. Nope. Not pretty. <laughs> that movie's coming out soon. Yeah. yeah shave Sasquatch. That was, a, that was a good episode. Uh, that was a great episode. Yeah, so it's um so so there's that thing it's like I'd also would kind of get on the train of being like, you know, Bigfoot has some kind of UFO connection because it's that's that's kind of that's kind of popped up now or been a more popular theory in the, in the last couple of years about being, uh, you know, that, that Sasquatch is either, is either part of like, he is an alien, like he is some kind of alien creature or like, I think we've talked about it before or the theory that it's like, you know, he's, he's some kind of biologically engineered, uh, you know, organism like perfectly suited for you know whether it's like maybe it's like cataloging or you know looking after something in that area he's perfectly suited for that environment to kind of like be able to made made for that like right snowy frozen wasteland but it would make sense to me that if you're being like okay if the government's out there recovering sasquatch bodies it would make more sense it's like yeah okay so they are aliens like they are but they don't want us to know about them but they just happen to frequent that if it's a men in black situation where it's like we have a bunch of sasquatches living in this area who are also you know they are aliens and so they go and get we got to go get the bodies before you know before the uh the park found and that's why and that's when that's why you never found find sasquatch body yeah men in black pick them up pick them up pick them up or they bury their dead. Another theory. That's also one, yeah, too. Why do we never find Sasquatch? Because they are sentient beings and they bury their dead and they don't allow you to. I mean, there's some there's some people that report that they find, like, the those burial grounds or, like, they found, like, areas that look like they could possibly be somewhere. That would like be mounds. the fucking, that would be the fucking creepiest thing, walking through the woods and finding that. I'd just a little, a little mound, out. a shallow mound, oh and you just start God. digging in, there's a fucking Bigfoot hand just pops out. Oh, I'd be done. Why, why would you dig into it? I wouldn't even dig into it. Ooh, <laughs> that'd be the first out? thing I did was like, dig into it. Like zombie Bigfoot? <laughs> 
No, it's just like you're digging well, into potential. the thing and like, you know. But I like I see like zombie movie. That's how I describe it. I also it. don't know why I would go. I would not dig up some random mound in the woods. <laughs> You wouldn't if you seen no. this suspiciously looking fresh no. mound in the middle no. of the woods. You wouldn't like start digging no. around on. It. No, I got a phobia of mounds. I see a mound. I'm out. It's, Hard no. it's, 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 lo- yeah. it's loose dirt. There's no weeds pass. or anything or grass Hard growing. Pass. You could tell it was it's just been... something that's been buried though. That's what I mean. So start digging like, it up. I would think. Yeah, but then, no. No. It's, oh, even dude, then it's, I'd yeah, be so it's... scared because my brain would go no. either Bigfoot or I. I've just freshly no. found a serial killer you, spot. You know what happens when you when you start digging in that grave and like you know you see some of that hand in the the Sasquatch hand, then you start hearing the wood knocks. Like, Oh, yeah, and the wasteland, and you're like your fucking Bigfoot gravesite, buddy. And, yeah, yeah, and you're, you're fucked, and you're fucking yeah. getting Blair Witch, Sasquatch, yeah, fucking. Yeah. Someone's yeah. gotta, someone's gotta do it. That's but the I don't think that's, that's the worst part. Of- <laughs> Imagine you're getting paranormally activated by Bigfoot ghosts. See, I don't. I the don't house think, was built uh, on a Sasquatch burial ground. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a like out of that, out, like out of the realm of possibility for like an ape culture to. Just bury their dead, like bury them. Why not? Right? No, I, I, I don't think that's crazy. No. With all the stuff, like we we know they have like other like chimps and stuff have like really intricate like societies and like social things they do. So I don't think it would be a weird thing to be like. I've seen Chimp Empire now. Yeah, I've I've learned stuff about chimps I never knew was real. And they fucking. I'm just, not, I'm just not digging monkeys up. with their bare hands. Yeah, it's, I couldn't believe true. that. Monkeys go to war, man. The chimps uh, climb the trees, grab a monkey, and just like fucking hammer toss it against a trunk, kill and it, and eat them, and eat it alive. Just uh, fucking raw, and wriggling. Yeah, it, yeah, and it's just yeah. I, just don't go digging up mounds and random places. Don't I'm do stu- that. You would though. I think yeah, there's a lot I of people wouldn't. listening right now that if you came across a, a random mound in the middle of nowhere, you would probably get this. You're probably, <laughs> just disturb it. Just disturb the surface it. at least. Yeah, I'm gonna dig it. You must dig. Um, Curiosity will get you. We forgot to talk about it at the top of the show, but did we have a theory of the week? Anything? Anyone stand out there? We didn't talk about that at all. No, we forgot. We fucking blew it on that one. Hey, blew blew it. It. Because you're busy. Did we blow it? Our, did they blow it? Because nothing fucking stood out for us to be like. That's obviously a theory of the week. I don't know. I think maybe the Facebook group's been shadow banned again. I don't really see posts from it anymore. Oh really? Yeah, it's Possible. been it's been pretty slow. So I think we. Yeah. I got another well, it's shadow weird man. because like you think another, Zuck, another you false think peanut Zuck butter post. doing all his fucking elk and shit, he'd be leaning a little more to the right now and let us, right? Let's let's post some shit. Or at least his buddy, he's be, stick to the jujitsu and just let things go. Let him fly. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good, man. Peanut butter wrapped in plastic's real thing. You don't have to fucking ban people for it. Yeah, but you um, seen it? That guy's saying nice things in reviews right now. Oh, he's sad. cutting carbs. He's cutting peanut butter. He's cutting all that type of stuff. Yeah. He's he's cutting peanut butter right off the site. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's part of the Canada ban. Like all Canada content yeah, is getting Canada Canada's banned. Ban. Yeah. Yeah. Getting it's getting true. The Canada. only news I see on Facebook now since that happened is Russia Today. That's it. Yeah. That's right. the only news. I see <laughs> it, and it's in my feed because now I'm interested. So I I look at it, and now it's in my in my feed every day. Instagram, yeah. Facebook, doesn't matter. It's a huge today. Putin supporter now. <laughs> huge. All of a sudden, I'm a fucking pro, pro Putin. Pro Putin. Uh, Ukraine's corrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I. That's what I know now. That Ukraine's a corrupt yeah. country. We must go over there and li- liberate them. Yeah. NATO's um, NATO's. It's not Russia's fault. NATO when it, it, the NATO expansion goes against all the treaties they signed. Uh, Putin ha- is in his right. <laughs> that's what I see every day. Yeah. He's trying to convert convert me. <laughs> It's crazy um, though. That is right, true. Well, That's a true story. Which what the NATO expansion? Or are you getting the, I'm you getting Russia today and the, and the NATO <laughs> expansion as well. What the fuck come on? What are we doing over? <laughs> um I mean we did sign deals that said we wouldn't. And then we did. That's so, a whole that's a whole different know, that's a whole nother well maybe we'll do that. We're already at war. We already gave them weapons. What's the difference? Yeah. Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Anyways. Um all right, how well, about instead well, of that, let's read some new Patreon supporters. Woo! The real VIPs, the yeah. VIPs yeah. of the show. These are all the theorites of the week. Yeah, yeah, all you beauties. Anyone who signed up in the last couple uh, of weeks? So. Wyatt Halliday, Elijah Green, Brenda Ross, Sammy Mahia, and Emily Scordato. Welcome back, Emily. She's Welcome been back. gone for a while. Welcome back to the fold. 
We got the Coda Bear moving up, so we appreciate that. Marcus P, Christian James, Drea Christina, Yunk Saggy Balls, <laughs> and fucking, I think is this is my guy. This is our fucking that champion. That's the this champion. Is our fucking champion. It's the medieval champion himself. Dilly Dilly to Grim Grimnar. Grimnar. We also have Jose the Whiskey Man, Joshua Bazin, John Moore, Bigfoot's left shoe, surprisingly. Nice. J. R. Moreno, and up to a full year pledge by Pat Lee. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the nice. support. Guys, uh, the show lives on your support, so uh, get you get tons of access to bonus stuff. Uh, so check it out, uh, AlienTheorist.com. Hit that support tab, uh, and as we oh, and don't forget we got a fucking logo contest going on right now. Uh, send in your submissions, AlienTheorist at gmail.com. I need to say this right now. If you're listening to this and you sent me one to my personal Instagram account or Don't you DM'd me one to mm -hmm. Discord or you DM'd me and you're like, this is submitted. It's not submitted. Send us the image to AlienTheorists at gmail.com. You can do That's logo correct. submission stuff. Uh, first praise, uh, $300 and a swag bag. And coming on the show uh, when we pick the winner, uh, second place third place you're getting something too but not as good because you didn't win didn't win <laughs> first place counts all right uh, yeah and as we always say at the end of these things keep those eyes on the skies peace Um, you know, it's funny. I was driving through, I can't remember what pass it is in Washington, but it was like, there you've was seen, a, and a, you've seen Bigfoot. Saw Bigfoot. Well, you've I seen saw them? something.